Hey, fine family. Um, chapter 7 of Gentlemen Lowly. We're going to jump right in this morning. Uh, the topic is a little bit difficult. It's on sin. And uh, what do you think about when you think about sin? Or let me ask you another question for you to, for you to think about this morning. But um, what happens, what's God's reaction to your sin in your life? We're going to see that there's, there's, um, there's a couple possibilities there. And so uh, what we need to first understand is what Ortland, I think, rightfully covers at the beginning of this chapter is that we often minimize our sin. We do not have a very good understanding of our sin because we are sinners, because we have a sinful nature, because our mind is sinful. And so when we think about our sin, we often think that our sins are misdemeanors. Uh, they're very low on the scale of offenses. But in fact, if we really understand God, God being holy and perfect and just, we would understand that all sin, every sin, and all sin, all types of sin, all individual sins, all corporate sins, all sins of, of omission, which are things that we don't do, and all sins of commission, which are things that we do that we should not do, all those sins are sins against a holy and perfect God and that they are, in fact, major offenses. If we, we think of our sins as being misdemeanors, when, in fact, our sins are serious felonies. We, we, have, committed, um, we have committed sins against this perfect and holy God of the universe. And that makes our sin significant. And it makes all of our sin and each of our sins major offenses. Now, here's the deal. What's God reaction to that sin, to the sin that we're going to commit today, that you're going to commit today. What is what is God's reaction? How does Jesus deal with that sin? Well, I would say this, and Ortland points this out. For those who do not know Christ, for those outside of, of a saving relationship with Jesus, those who have not repented nor placed their trust in Christ, when 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 people who are in that group sin, well, it, it just stores up holy wrath that will be poured out one day upon them unless they repent and place their trust in Jesus. So for the one who, who is um, unsaved, the one who is far from God, who has no relationship with Jesus, sin in, in their lives stores up wrath to be paid for uh, at some point. Now, here's the good news. For those who have repented and placed their trust in Jesus, for those who have confessed their sins, who have, um, who, who, who have a saving relationship with Christ, who are followers of Christ, and I don't, I don't mean just verbalize that and say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, but really, truly have a relationship with the Lord. Those in that category have had all their sins, past, present, future, paid for on the cross. Jesus paid for all our sins. So when we sin now as believers, and we do, we have to understand that those sins have been paid for. And what we find is that when we sin now, God has a, a different reaction. It's not a reaction of storing up wrath. He's already poured that wrath out upon his son. So what is his reaction? Well, his reaction we find in Scripture is grace. That when we sin now as believers, as people who have a saving relationship with Jesus, who have had their sins, past, present, future, paid for by Jesus on the cross, when we sin, God reacts not with, not with disproportionate anger, as we might be tempted to believe because of our sinful nature, not with uncontrolled um, um, rage, and not with holy wrath, but with grace. That when we sin, God shows us grace. And we have to, I think Ortland points out perfectly here, that God, that, that God defines grace, that the grace that we often say, well, we've been given grace, we've been shown grace, is really not a concept. It's a person. When we sin, when we do things that are contrary to God, and we do. And again, we should not minimize those. 
God does not pour his wrath out upon us. He gives us more Jesus. He gives us more grace. Grace being a person of Jesus. Does that mean we should sin more? Oh, by no means. If we are true followers of Jesus, we are being molded and shaped into Christ. Our sins should be less and less. But when we sin, we do not have to worry about God punishing us or God coming down hard on us or God um, evoking his wrath upon us because he's already done that to the one who took our place. He's already done that to Jesus. And Jesus took our place there. And so now when we sin, God shows us grace upon grace. Well, a song that we sing here at the Vine is our grace, uh, our sin is many. Our, our sins are many. But his grace, his mercy and grace is more. We cannot out sin God's grace, God's love, God's mercy if we have repented and placed our trust in Jesus, which brings us to where we need to kind of land this morning because of time. The question here is not whether we're sinners. Everyone everywhere watching this and not watching this are all sinners. The question is, are those sins paid for? Have you repented and placed your trust in Jesus? Have you gone to him and confessed your sins? Do you have a saving relationship with Christ? If you do, here's what we know. If you have a saving relationship with Jesus, yes, you will sin. And we should never minimize that, but yes, we will sin. But waiting after we sin is Jesus again with open arms to give us more of himself, to show us love and mercy and grace. If you have repented and placed your trust in Jesus, our sin may be many, but his mercy and his grace and his love is more. And that's good news. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you. We know we sin against you. Lord, would you help perfect us, mold us, shape us, fashion us more and more into the image of your Son. Remind us, Lord, of what Jesus has done and on our behalf. He's lived a life for us and died a death for us, that you have raised him from the grave. Lord, and that we can be reconciled to you if we repent and place our trust in him. And then, Lord, as believers, when we sin, when we give in to temptation, Lord, remind us that you are there to show us grace and love and mercy, and that never fails. Lord, we love you. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time.